We've approached, when teaching comparatively, the subject different than most of our colleagues in that we begin with the broader question of what is safety and what is insecurity. And then that allows us to ask to begin with the question of why do you feel safe in Japan and why do you not feel safe in certain other barrios or ghettos around the world? And that's a different way of framing the question. And that framing of it allows us to look much more at the law and society reasons, the cultural reasons, the broader understanding of criminality and justice and safety by coming out at that approach. Substantive criminal law in Japan is not very interesting. It's almost the exact same as it is in Australia or the US or the UK, the places where I've practiced. And indeed, the law in the books, when you look at Japanese procedural, criminal procedural law, isn't that interesting. Japanese criminal law only becomes interesting when you take that process and you put it into context that it operates in Japan. So while the law in the books looks almost identical to say for us, for example, Australia, the outcomes are radically different. And that only can be explained by understanding the broader context for it. So the kind of um, tokenistic things we use to use as evidence of that assertion is one the 99.96% conviction rate in Japan and the 93% confession rate. And then we look through the legal structure to see why those are there and what are the side effects of having those outcomes. Uh, so in the court seminar, uh, for our class, we tight, uh, we gave a second uh, subtitle. It's a holistic approach to Japanese criminal justice. So holistic means it's uh, uh, not only legal, but also various uh, kind of disciplines approach uh, for considering about issue various issues in the criminal justice system. So as Kent suggested uh, uh, not only legal, uh, but also social or cultural, uh, the many uh, possible approach we can take. So I, am so, I, I have been so excited uh, to educate uh, not, uh, uh, Japanese student and Australian student uh, the, in the view of the Japanese side and the Australian side or American side or other country side. So our discussion is very, very interesting in the classroom. So we call it beyond the borders in the classroom. As, as you know, the uh, Japan has uh, less uh, crime statistics our society is very safe. It means uh, we have not much population in prison. So uh, our uh, statistics of homicide is very lower than other uh, developed countries. So it means the reality in Japanese prison you cannot see many uh, brutal murders. So you can see a lot of elder prisoners in Japan, and they are not violent. They are uh, multiple theft or uh, drug users. Over 70% of the prisoners uh, having the crime history of both category. So uh, biggest, uh, you know, volume in prison uh, is from the, those groups. So the, my point is uh, current 
prison issue in Japan is for the rehabilitation of such people. Prisons is definitely not my expertise, but I do want to just throw in two kind of anecdotes. So in 1994, um, I went to my first Japanese prison at the invitation of both Ibuski and myself, our, our former colleague, uh, Setsuo Miyazawa. And uh, it was Akashi prison in um, just outside of Kobe in Western Japan. So the maximum security prison for Western Japan. Um, and again, that's 25 years ago. So I'm sure things have changed, but I came there immediately from having been at a, a, a US federal maximum security prison. And you literally could not have described anything more different than those two experiences. There were no, the guards didn't have weapons and stuff, but just building on the theme that Ibuski was developing around the rehabilitation aspect. And I would almost say the, the benign aspect of multiple offenders. So everyone in there is a multiple offender. So a multiple offender, um, but there's a, I'm sure everywhere, but there's a lot of mental illness. There's a lot of perpetual uh, economic troubles that ha have got there. So it's, it's less violent um, in, in many ways. And that was just, I, the, I just really want to stress that rehabilitation that in, so it was, it was quite different. The second experience I wanted to share on that rehabilitation was again, both uh, Ibuski-san and myself have taught at Hokkaido University. Indeed, Miyazawa sensei used to teach at Hokkaido University. And the Hok I visited the Hokkaido uh, prison because that's where you got the best furniture, handmade furniture in Japan was from the Hokkaido prison because they were rehabilitating many of the, the people to become furniture, um, to, to be make experts in, in traditional Japanese furniture. Now, I've painted a very, very positive image of prisons by telling these two stories. But one of the characteristics of Japanese law is whether you paint the positive story or the negative story. And I think with all of these things, uh, we've learned that they're two sides of the same coin. So you might have others who paint a very negative story. I'm not denying that's there. There's lots of things. But I do want to say that the, the, the rehabilitation aspect of Japanese prisons, um, I think, is, is impressive. This century, the, in Japan, we have uh, uh, criminal justice reform twice. Now, one is bigger, the second is uh, smaller. The, on the first uh, criminal justice reform, uh, we, we decided to introduce uh, civil participation in criminal trial. The, it's a uh, 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 in fact, uh, second trial in our modern history. The over 70 years ago, we introduced a pure jury trial the, based on the democracy movement uh, in Japan. The, we introduced Anglo-American style, 12 jurors, the bench. Uh, however, we stayed uh, it uh, during Second World War. So after war, we did not uh, restart the jury trial. However, the end of the last century, uh, the industrial society started uh, claim to the uh, judicial system in Japan. It's very slow or uh, no uh, democratic foundation or uh, very few lawyers, number of lawyers, or uh, no common sense in, in judges and so on. So uh, the government uh, uh, launched the judicial uh, reform uh, committee 
for this idea, we introduced a, a mixed uh, uh, judge system, uh, very close to European style. The three uh, professional judges and the six lay persons. So, so this is uh, our second trial of civil participation uh, in criminal trial. So we, we can say that it's, uh, uh, it was influenced by uh, uh, foreign countries' experience for civil participation. We've now had over 10 years of experience with the Saibain system, so we can do some assessment of whether or not it's an improvement. Um, the why it was introduced, to be honest, is, is a bit vague, but I've summarized it in my writing to say it was introduced either to get better justice outcomes or to get better democracy outcomes. Democ Democracy is civic, civil participation. I would say from that side of it, it has been very good. I would give it, you know, a B plus, A minus grade in that the people that have participated have reported that um, it, it hasn't been pressured. And I think there's more popular knowledge and interest in the law, which is an important part of what juries or lay participation does. On the other side though, better justice, I don't think we've seen radically different outcomes produced by the Saibain than we saw produced by just professional judges. There have been subtle differences, and those subtle differences actually go towards a bit more punitivism. And those of us that are criminology experts or experts in a more holistic approach might actually say that's not even an improvement. That's a that's a regression. So on that, um, look, let's give it a C. So two standards, and I think two different outcomes. And the question that the Japanese population has to ask is whether the democracy improvements are worth the cost of delivering the same justice outcomes. Prosecutorial, prosecutorial discretion, there has been a bit of change on the margins on that with some videotaping and with some uh, changes to the, the review commission and with um, some uh, corruption cases for prosecutors. So there has been some change there, but overall they still remain the kings of the criminal justice system. So as I uh, talked to Arya, uh, civil participation in the criminal justice. It is a typical uh, changed one. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, point out the criminal defense lawyers activity mm. is uh, developed so much for these years. So there is a reason. The one is uh, legal support for the defense activity, it uh, influenced the indictment ratio by prosecutor. Uh, the, the statistics shows uh, very dramatically after the defensive work uh, uh, has become uh, uh, very active. So uh, the, these days, the it is common to, for a suspect defendant to access to the lawyers in the pre-indictment stage, almost 100%. So it is covered by a public fund. So I can say the constitutional or procedural or suspect right uh, is developed, has been developed so much. And uh, uh, another aspect, uh, we developed the science and the technology in the investigation stage and the criminal trial stage. A uh, typical example is the GPS surveillance and the DNA fingerprint. So 
these technology and science changed uh, the daily uh, uh, work of uh, police, uh, prosecutor, and uh, judges. So I uh, took a survey of uh, using uh, information technology in the uh, uh, foreign countries to, for pandemic era. So uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the average using uh, technology in Japan uh, is behind uh, the other countries. So I learned a lot uh, from other countries uh, for using technology in the various process uh, of criminal justice. For example, in UK, they uh, started to remote legal advice to interrogation room to the suspect. It means uh, attorney uh, can access to uh, interrogation room from their office uh, through a telephone or a video conference. So it's a uh, one of the solution for avoiding uh, inf infection of COVID-19. So on the other hand, in Japan, uh, the uh, court office is uh, very afraid to introduce such a, uh, remote technology, online communication to their practice. So the only in civil procedure, uh, last year they started to introduce a uh, 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 pre-trial or hearing uh, among uh, lawyers and the judges, but uh, they never used in the criminal trial process. So it's a very reluctant. Uh, I think uh, mm, this year or next year, uh, Japanese uh, code will try these technologies, but uh, now <laughs> it's late. Yeah, I, I understand the, the remote trial has a, a big problems, especially the, the in the in the view of constitutional law. For example, uh, uh, the the fact finding process, uh, hearing the testimony uh, from a witness and uh, looking the the real evidence and check and uh, reading a lot of uh, document. So there is uh, very uh, critical issues, but uh, in oh, for avoiding the infection of COVID-19, uh, we have to use such technology uh, the, as a kind of solution. Thank you.